what's going on guys welcome back to our race card build in today's episode we need to install a fire suppression system into the our e46 race car so right behind me as you see displayed we have a fire suppression system that we have purchased from lifeline so first i'm going to go over some of the um, components that are included and what kind of system exactly is this and then we're going to go through the installation process of this very system so stick around to the end of this video to see how easy or not is installation of this exact system first let me give you some uh, details what exact what kind of system exactly is this and what's included so first off this is a lifeline system and the model is 0 2020 which is a abf model it's actually a new model for 2022 year uh, being abf uh, because all the most of the older systems are a triple f which uh, i was advised that the ab uh, f systems are a little bit more advanced or better and they don't require as as big of a canister uh, when compared to the a triple f systems but i'm not an expert so i'm not going to get into uh, details and the benefits are over one over the other so uh, let me show you what's included now this is the uh, electric um, system this is not a mechanical system like most of the systems that are out there which this is a little bit higher level or higher priced um, uh, level system being electric uh, which basically means you have uh, electricity going through it to activate it uh, if that makes sense opposed to mechanical cables being pulled so uh this is a, a three liter as you can see this is that uh the tag that comes on uh on the uh on the tank itself and uh, the tank is a, a three liter tank it has the the module on top the electric module we have the um the cable uh wiring or the the tubing connector on top now some of the items that come with it are the uh t connectors to split for for the nozzles it, it comes with five spraying nozzles it comes with two activation switches and uh this is a power module this is uh, powered internally does not use any power from the car itself it has an internal powering so source uh which i believe is i was i think i was told is good for like five years if not mistaken and then we have below the um the actual tank we have the the bracket that you mount inside the car have the uh, stickers that you need to place by the uh like the activation switches and then you have the the bends for the tank itself wiring and uh tubing uh, rather i should say and then we have the wiring for the power module and uh, for the for the switches and then we have some uh fireproof jackets for the tubing so that's what's involved uh, or what's included in this 0 2020 lifeline electric system so uh, next part is uh, we need to decide where we need to where we're gonna place this bottle so let's head over inside the car and uh, and i'll show you how we're gonna plan this out this is actually not that involved as i initially thought so uh shouldn't be that bad so stick around and uh, let's start installing this first step would be any vehicle that you're going to install this in you need to figure out best possible placement of the actual tank so in the, our situation uh, the way it sits now i think this will be uh very good for us because it's not in the way of anything and it's kind of close to the tunnel so we could run uh, the tubing or the wiring along the the tunnel and have it spread through here we have the dashboard out right now so it's a uh, easier working environment but this is um 
this is our original placement and if you just take this off right the bracket is straight forward you need to bolt it down to the floor and securing the bracket pretty standard obviously you have to drill four holes into the floor and uh, I put bolts to them I uh, I'm running uh, nylon nuts make sure this doesn't come off due to vibrations but before you actually secure the bracket you need to run these bends through the bottom because you won't be able to get this through uh, when you undo them to get it through the uh, mounting locations so you gotta do that first and just like that we have the uh, bottle placed and positioned secured nicely now since this is a um, electric system the valve placement does not uh, really matter as much as if, as, as if, if this was mechanical i know in mechanical system this is uh better if it's on its side but since this is electric the valve could be on top just like you see in this shot right here so um let's move on to the plumbing so this is all the accessories that are necessary to plumb this system so we have five nozzles and four quick connect t fitting which is really nice this is what makes this system real easy to set up because everything is quick connect and also in the middle here we have a firewall um fitting which is quick connect as well which makes the engine side of the system independent from the cockpit side so you could technically wire the engine side or plumb the engine side separately and then you could work inside the uh the cockpit so uh, that's exactly what i'm gonna do so let's move on to the engine and uh, figure out where we're gonna place this into the firewall and uh as well as the nozzles which three of them gonna go onto the engine side where we're gonna place them looking at the engine we get three nozzles the best way to allocate them is one on this side by the shock tower one on this one side and one in the middle pointing at the fuel rail right here because i believe you're not this is actually the most common place where the engine fires start right at the fuel source so um we should have that area nicely covered now we need to mount the um the firewall uh, adapter so you will need to drill a 5 8 hole which i already actually did you see right there and uh, you have nuts you have two nuts with these so i already took one off all you do is slide one in like that and then put the other not on the other side and that makes this fitting secure and we could uh feed off of this fitting right here and start wiring the engine bay going off of the firewall quick connect we're gonna use our first t uh, because we need to branch off of here and we're gonna place the fir fir first nozzle somewhere around here spraying the top of the fuel rail here so we need a connection so i already cut this small piece of pipe the aluminum pipe that um, that comes with the kit and all you do is just slide it in just like so like that and that's it see that that's how easy it is to connect the two pipes together and uh, by the way this pipe is very pliable so now we could uh, bend it in a way so be somewhere around here now it also will be useful to have something like this a pipe cutter like this plumbing pipe cutter this makes the cuts nice and and uh, even uh, so you have good connection on all ends got the first piece for the first nozzles cut to length approximately so we could just pop the first nozzle on and I could stick it inside here and see how it fits. Now, I want to make sure it goes all the way in. So it doesn't have any chance to popping out. And then, what our goal is to mount this somewhat like this. 
So when it sprays, it sprays the whole fuel rail. I'm gonna have to mount it here somehow. Made this bracket for the nozzle out of uh, sheet uh, metal. And I'm gonna place it somewhat like this. I actually moved the cowl up and then we could just point it in the direction we, we desire. Um, but before you actually place this, um, they give, they provided this uh, fire jacket uh, for the actual uh, tube. So we're gonna cut the two lengths and then we're gonna mount this up right here. Here's a close up look of the first nozzles. Very simple. Just use a self stuffing screw uh, to, to tap this into the uh, sheet metal from the chassis and got our fire retardant jacket. So well, now we're gonna move on to the sides. This side right here and that. Let's uh, hook up the next T. That way we could branch off to either side of the car. We're gonna start working on this side. Throw this in a time lapse mode, that way it's not too redundant, but you guys get the picture. Just like so, we have the uh, engine bay side finish. We have the nozzle on the left side, spraying towards here. And uh, let me show you the, the routing. I mean, this is on this car in particular car, but you know, depending on the car that you are uh, installing this in, you gotta route out properly. I was able to run it through here, there, and up to the connector, T connector right there. And then it's going down into inside the, uh, through the firewall into the cabin. And then we have this branch off here for the uh, center nozzle, which spray all, sprays on top of the fuel rail. And last but not least, we have the right side of the engine. I kind of pointed towards the headers because this is the hottest spot uh, in this area or in the whole engine bay. So that should take care of this area. We have the routing here. And I uh, drill the hole through here and then it goes there and into the T. All right, so let's move on into the inside of the car. Let me show you the, how it looks from the other side. Here we are inside the cabin. As you can see, if you look through this side here, the pipe is gonna go, is gonna go along the, uh, the, the, the trans transmission tunnel up. And then let me show you from this side. Do you see here, that is the ball connector, which this is gonna tap into. Pipes, uh, the tubing is gonna go from from, oh, from this side, and then we're gonna extend it and go all the way to the left so we could install the nozzles for the driver. Got the T here, I'm gonna plug it in like so. Make sure it locks, there we have it. I'm gonna run the pipe from here. And then we're gonna follow it towards the driver's side. This is the nozzle for the driver. This nozzle is the upper nozzle pointed at the mid-drift of the driver, uh, sitting right here. So we want something that be covering the area 
uh, up to the waist so this is a good spot for it right there and then the second uh, nozzle we actually, actually ran it here which is on the bottom in the and it sprays kindly kind of on the towards the feet and um, towards the uh, the tunnel and the, the firewall area because uh, most fires come from that side so that's what we uh, that's what I chose this uh, location you can see it from this side it tucks around uh, right here placed a band around it and those are the two locations of the nozzles for the driver so we have the plumbing complete now let's talk about the electrical system or the activation mechanism to make this uh, system complete you as you see here i already have the switches uh, installed on the left side here and on the right over there where it's easily reachable from the outside and the inside for the driver and as well i have the uh, brain of this whole system located right here which is easily uh, accessible as well and if you want to um, check it for maintenance or activate the whole system i actually don't have the footage when i was installing this because my camera has uh, decided not to work while i was doing it so i'm going to briefly describe what i have done um in terms of wiring for that system so the whole system comes as you saw in the beginning with uh, two uh, sides of the harness which each side has this plug on it which just basically plugs in and out this right here and then one for the bottle and uh, on the other side there's uh, basically plain wires uh, which you need to wire I'm gonna throw a wiring diagram that I kind of use to wire this this system doesn't have any polarity so you don't have to worry about which side is the plus or minus it all how it works is basically it's a closed loop so uh, when you for example press this button the loop closes and it act and it sets off the um, the charge in the in the uh, tank and the uh, the foam is being released onto the uh, into inside the car it's not really difficult to wire it however one complaint I need to make is about these activation switches because the, this is a terrible choice for activation switch i mean they look nice they have a nice protective uh kind of ring so you don't press them on a mistake however to wire them it's a pain in the butt because um the uh, the prongs on the other side where you need to attach the wire are so tiny it's nearly impossible to get connectors for those and if you want to run a electrical wire through them it's it's very uh very hard as well because they um the holes are so small inside the prongs that even a 20 gauge wire has hard time fitting into them but uh, we kind of manage um uh, manage to to hook them up and um that's how they look but uh yeah that's that's a uh, one uh complaint i have about this wiring uh, of this system but once you have this uh system wired it's it's pretty actually pretty straightforward because if you look at this um this brain or or this box let me plug this in uh it has the little toggle switch right here and it has uh three settings right you have a battery check and uh, this uh, system runs on its own battery meaning that it does not use any electrical from the car so you need to check the battery per periodically i would assume probably yearly or every two years and yeah uh, you all you do to check the battery you just press this button down and um and if the light lights up that means the system is good now the second option is a system uh, test or is it's called uh system uh, is is isolated what that does is you actually could check if your activation switches are uh, working so let me just demonstrate for you right there so we have everything plugged in uh, you have we have it in the middle position which is a default position by the way and uh, if you press this button right if you press the activation button you look here see 
uh, green light will display which uh, that gives you a indication that the system is working uh, properly meaning there is a connection between your switches and the brain because last thing you want is you know thinking this system is gonna fire in the case of an emergency and then you press the button and it doesn't work so if you press this button as you can see it that uh, you could test it because the system is all isolated now to activate the whole system for example if you uh if you're starting a race you just flip it to the side and you could see we got the red light saying system system arm now under no circumstances you don't want to press these button now the, these buttons now because in this case it will fire off the um the charge and it will disperse the foam from the um from the uh from the tank so this is where that's where the system is actually live and ready to use so by default you switch it back and that's where it's uh, that's the default position where it's isolated and even though you press the button it will not fire as you just saw if you're able to test the system that means your wiring is complete and you're ready to use it in the case of an emergency uh one thing to note is that this is uh, required to be recertified every two years which is not too bad but other than that you're pretty much done i mean there's nothing else to do you can enjoy this uh abf electrical system in your car i don't, I don't know if i should say enjoy but uh if need be uh, you should be very well protected hopefully that answers some of the uh, concerns how do you set this up if it did make sure you uh, hit a like comment down below and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and i will catch you in the next one peace